Minecraft is a game for everyone, right? Well, that's what the government wants you to think. Haven't you realized that you can go to hell in this game? And the stories that are developing inside these worlds made of blocks are only getting scarier. So there are bound to be some scary theories about the lore and the world, and those are what we're exploring today. And if you like this video and want to see more Minecraft, head on over to our Minecraft channel, Minecraft Nightmare, okay? It's like this, but instead of FNAF, it's Minecraft and really fun. Jay and I play off of each other in such a way that makes the whole video entertaining for everyone. So head on over there and say you came from Top 10 Gaming, okay? Let's do it! That's the energy you can expect. <laughs> and it's in Zombie Virus. This is a slightly older theory, but it's a question that I had when watching the trailers for uh, Minecraft Legends. Is like, why are the piglins invading? Okay, don't like they turn into zombies after 30 seconds of being exposed to the overworld. And while this is a different overworld with new biomes and new structures and rules, I think there could already be some lore explanations working in our favor. MatPat once theorized that there was an airborne zombie virus that was poisoning the overworld air that uh, things living in the overworld eventually developed an immunity to, unless otherwise compromised by like a lightning bolt or a zombie bite and that's why the nether mobs turn into zombies after exiting the portal. However, I propose a theory that the army we recruit in this game actually released the toxin that, that does this themselves as an effort to prevent the piglins from invading again, either as a last ditch attempt after they win or maybe it was their plan all along. One that only affects piglins or that one over time uh, we end up developing an immunity to. So yeah. And a nine future golems. Looking at the poster for Minecraft Legends as well, since there isn't really much else that we can see, we can see like designed creepers, meaning that there are going to be more than just the few creepers we see in the trailer. However, it's also interesting to see that there are a load of other creatures that aren't in the base Minecraft game. What I can only assume are sentient prototype wooden dispensers that look like Qbert with a head full of arrows, the golden allay, like I've mentioned in other lists, but also three different types of golem. A seemingly carved stone golem, four of those at least, a mossy cobblestone golem above those, and some odd blue golems next to the creepers. Now, I'm not exactly sure what these could be. However, I'm guessing that they're kind of di maybe diamond golems, but that seems kind of ridiculous, but probably skulk golems since they have a similar appearance to the warden's design and they seem to be made with deep slate as well. Whether those were created or they just joined the fight on their own is up for debate, but I do really think that they are skulk golems and that they'll be exclusive uh, to this game until the community gets a feel for them and then they might be added to like the next mod vote or maybe the one after that. I, I still want the Moo Bloom though. Can we please get the Moo Bloom? Thank you. And it ain't falling out. In the beginning of the first Legends trailer, I think the strangest thing we can see is actually that there are zombie baby villagers playing in the village next to normal villagers without trying to kill them, which is absolutely insane. Like, how is that a thing? No way. Well, okay, believe it or not, it is a thing, and it's right in the beginning. So how could this be possible? It is possible that maybe the zombies and villagers had a falling out later on that causes them to become enemies. Or maybe in our lore, the nether war ends up turning the zombies to their side, because like maybe they didn't have to wear stupid hats in the nether, because you know, there's always a ceiling, so instead the zombies ended up joining their team. I don't know, but it's certainly interesting to see that while we think that we have to like unite warring factions, they don't seem to be at odds at all, and in fact never were. Or it could be that the toxin they released to keep the piglins at bay after the war also turns those mobs hostile, or that they otherwise had some conflict that results in the overworld we see in 1.19. See? I'm bringing it back. <laughs> Maybe the introduction of the skulk or the corruption from the nether is where the hostility came from. In at 7, the next update. Now when talking about the next update before it's even announced, you're going to get into pretty speculative territory, but I think that this is certainly something that's developing kind of a pattern. The Minecraft Legends game along with the last seems to be expanding on certain aspects of the Minecraft lore, but in a way that makes not everything canon to the main game, which is certainly a cleaner or clever way of approaching this since they can gauge what the fans like and what they don't so that they can omit the things that we don't like and only add the things we do into the main game later on. And while you may think that Minecraft doesn't need lore, okay, it already has a story. It has a final boss that just makes there be lore. But in the end, if you want it to be different, it can be. For example, I claim that my character is from a race of aliens that live on the moon, okay? But going back to the next game, I think that it will most likely end up being another mysterious realm, the end. The end has always been a mystery for us players ever since version 1.0 when it was introduced. So I think that the next update and whatever 
uh, the next g mini game is, the next uh, out of universe Minecraft game, uh, will probably have, uh, have be focused on the end and uh, not something that's like randomly thrown into the combat update to give us wings. So we need like a proper end update. Uh, I think we all agree on that. And at six, ancient city mine shaft. Before the new update, the only non-story structure generated inside Minecraft's caves was the mine shaft. You could get some pretty decent loot in it after fighting off a bunch of basic mobs, but the stakes are higher now because one seed makes the mine shaft you spawn near to actually lead directly into an ancient city. But honestly, the way I see it, every structure in every world is a story structure. Like, sure, it's not the stronghold, but there is a reason why this mine shaft is breaking into this ancient city. Maybe some other clan of builders ended up breaking through it, or maybe there were resources up higher that the residents of the city decided to build platforms to access, and then they just kept digging, okay? I love stories. I love telling stories stories. It's the part of the reason I love theories. And the stories that you can make up for your own worlds can be incredible. And this tiny detail just gives it that little extra oomph you need to really make a living world, I guess. Not even thinking about the multiverse as well, which, because like technically every seed is just another earth, unless the world border is the divide between seeds and they all eventually link together. Oh god. How we do in at number five, what are ghasts? Ghasts, the giant floating jellyfish of the nether. What the hell are they? Get it? Giant floating jellyfish may be mutated due to the harsh climate of the nether, some other mob that's been warped due to eating warped mushrooms and nether wart, or is it um half a person after a couple builders had a little too much fun one night? Cause you know those block orgies. <laughs> Nobody knows, but I, I guess we can take a stab at guessing. They could be a form of squid brought to the nether and tested on by ancient builders. They could have been changed thanks to their diet of warped mushrooms, crimson root, and nether wart. And then maybe they got bigger and thanks to the climate they developed an immunity to fire and lava. And they also didn't need to breathe oxygen in water. And then their ability to shoot ink morphed into the ability to shoot fireballs from their mouths? I don't know. It's gruesome and it's horrifying, but that's what happens when you experiment on squids in hell. But uh, maybe Minecraft Legends can actually help answer this uh, instead of 1.19 because, you know, uh, it, it could just be like because they're doing another thing or it could just be that it's like an escaped soul that developed a, a, a body in the nether okay I haven't the really faintest clue what a ghast could be but uh, yeah it please explain it <laughs> in a four skulk stalkers did you know that siren head was actually almost in Minecraft kind of well thanks to the Mojang dev King B dog who is actually one of the creators of the iconic Aether mod from way back in the day he shared on his Twitter some of the original concepts from wardens earlier this year on January 22nd, 2022, King tweeted a photo and said, quote, Stalkers were going to have a glowing item in the middle of its chest that you would also randomly find throughout the biome floating on totems. The idea was that Stalkers would stand perfectly still to fake these glowing items and then you can infer the rest. And the look of these things really just looks like a skulk version of Siren Head by Trevor Henderson. And there's even gameplay footage for them and the original design before they added all the skulk looks exactly like Siren Head. So yeah, I'm very glad these aren't in the game, okay? They're terrifying and make the skulk so much scarier, but had they have been added, this would have been the scariest monster ever. But maybe could they be added to the next version? I mean, the skulk is only concerning if you're actually scared of the warden, but with a couple of ender or some planning, you're really fine. So maybe, since we're already experts at avoiding the Warden just after the update released, they'll be adding another mob that can spawn in this biome. Ah, uh, fun fact, Skulk biomes are the second biome to have no monsters spawn in them, no matter the light level, okay? The first and only until now was Mushroom biomes, okay? Wardens can spawn, but they're spawned in through, like, technically a mob spawner, which could also happen in mo Mushroom biomes. Uh, if you found a, a dungeon, the monsters could spawn because of that block. So basically, it's the same thing. Getting close to the end of number three, Hero Brian is real. Okay, I know that Mo Yang keeps claiming Hero Brian isn't real and was never in the game, but it seems to be that Hero Brian could have very possibly be present in this game. Also, thanks to Minecraft Legends, they've made it clear that this new game is a different overworld, not one that we play around with in normal Minecraft, which means to me that they're thinking of doing something dairy. The issue of adding Hero Brian, however, could be like copyright with the character, since this character, while being based on Minecraft, was created by a fan for a Brocraft stream, but also 
it's just Steve with white eyes, so I don't really know how the copyright law works there. Um, but you know what? There could be some agreement to get him in there uh, if they really wanted to. But with the piglins popping out of the portal with glowing white eyes, I it, it sets off a trigger in my brain. I mean, like, yes, their texture in the game has them with like a white pixel for the eyes, but like glowing eyes is synonymous with Hero Brian. And if he's present in Legends, he could also be present in the vanilla game. Maybe he's the reason all the monsters turn to evil, okay? In a reply to a tweet asking if Hero Brian was a real entity in game, Notch replied saying that he wasn't, but that there might be soon, okay? This confirmed that there was no Hero Brian, but suggested that Notch planned on adding him at a later date. And then the whole Notch saying, quote, I've publicly told people there's never been any such thing as Hero Brian and I don't have any dead brothers. But then he also says, letting too many animals die in lava is a foolproof way to summon him, but that you don't need to be afraid of him, he only means well. He's looking out for you, trying to warn you of the dangers you can't see. Which I mean, like, come on, man, he's only asking for it. I mean, I have to, I have to just have a spawner over lava at this point, because I need, I need to, I need to know. But ultimately, in number two, ruined portals. One mystery I've been thinking about recently is the nether portals from the main Minecraft game, okay? Where did they come from? And why is the nether kind of leaking out of them? Why are they ruined? My first thought was Shadow of Israfel, since those portals had a similar, similar style, and I'm kind of obsessed with the Shadow of Israfel. Where's episode 43? In that story, they were scattered around and destroyed, but that doesn't really fit into the Minecraft lore because they leaked sand, not nether. However, with the trailer to Legends, this could be an explanation. The nether does start leaking out of these portals when they start springing up, so that explains the nether rack around these portals now. And it also suggests why the portals actually came around, because they were generated from the other side. They're ruined because we had to sever the connection, and tools were left nearby in case they ever ended up invading again, or maybe they just didn't want to use crappy gold tools. This game seems to be trying to explain the piglin and nether lore, which I am certainly looking for forward to, although please tell me what ghasts are. And finally, in at number one, the warden came from the nether. This is definitely a wild one, okay, but hear me out. This is probably not the case, but you might as well have some fun, right? Well, what put me on this path of thinking were actually wither skeletons. Matt, Pat, and others on Reddit have proposed the idea that maybe these are the bodies of fallen builders, buried in or absorbed by the soul sand we know that has the faces of screaming souls trapped inside. And then the skeletons left over could have been burnt from the harsh climate of the nether, or the blazes found in the very same nether structures, or nether fortresses, I guess. Having to fight off the reincarnated burnt skeletons of your former friends and family is definitely horrific, but doing that in literal hell seems a bit much. This could also be how they discovered the unique properties of soul sand, and that this then leads them to accidentally summoning the wither after too many failed attempts at bringing their lost comrades back from death. But, we also know that wardens and skulk have the ability to manipulate and use souls. The warden has souls on his chest, that are in the exact same place that the soul sand faces are, just mirrored. Uh, for example, the, the one face would be here, but the warden's face is here, and then like that. You know? So, what if the warden either came from the nether, or, since the texture is flipped, came from its own dimension that is a mirror or reverse version of the nether? That doesn't seem too crazy to me. Okay, well, the latter theory doesn't, that it's his own universe just mirrored. That's all the time we have for today, friends. Thank you all so much for watching. I have been and shall remain Connor Monroe, and I'll see you in another video. And if you like this, go check out Minecraft Nightmare. God damn!